I met this young woman. We started reading as and looking at the book of John, and I realized that I was enjoying her company. Although I like John, it's a great book, but I really, and so then when I expressed my interest in her, it was a reciprocation that was beginning. At that time, there were um, miscegenation laws in effect, and in some states it would have been illegal for us to be married. I said, okay, this is it, this is a man I want to marry, and I went home and told my father that I had met a man who was um, a Christian, he was a pastor, he was also a Negro. And all I can say is all hell broke loose when I said that. And the um, next thing I knew, I was on a bus to Los Angeles because of the threats that my father had made. You know, here I'm pastoring, and this is, we're like 10 years now married, but I was gonna go down to church and do a message on bitterness. And the Holy Spirit has said to me, you can't go down to church and share bitterness about bitterness because you've got bitterness in your heart against your father-in-law. And I, you know, I, I had really quite a, you know, struggle with that. What that text in, in Matthew says, if you're down praying and you remember, stop praying and go be reconciled. Well, you know, that's great in the Bible, but call my father-in-law who uh, the, our last encounter was not pleasant by any stretch of imagination. And I felt like it was his problem. And God said, no, you got a problem. Call him and ask for his forgiveness. It was a Sunday afternoon, I called him, and when I did, he, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't happy to hear from me by all indication of what he said and did. But I have such a peace. You know how when you know, like, you feel like you're really doing what God's, doing God's will. No one has to even say it, I have to applaud you, you don't give me money, it's just that I clearly knew that I was doing what God wanted me to do. Well, and, he hung up on you. Yeah. Yeah. When my husband started pastoring in Seaside, we were a very small congregation, almost all black. Um, but there were some people who left because they could not uh, accept me. I, I had to go back to the fact that I was reconciled to Jesus. You know, I didn't come here saved, you know? And I needed his redemption, and I needed to be reconciled. When Jesus hung on the cross and died, was the, that was the bridge that, that we're now one with God. But, but, but out of that relationship with God, then we are then, then called to be one with one another, to, to be reconciled to one another. The zip code is 98118, and it's representing 16 to 17 different ethnic groups, uh, seven or eight, nine different languages spoken. God respects diversity, He made it. So how do you celebrate that, and how do you walk in unity? And I think that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. So I can love you because I've been loved. So it's really a pass-through. If you see that way, then it takes the weight off of you trying to to justify why they should love you, why you should love them or not, but rather that's not only God's command, it's He empowers us to do that. Love is powerful and reconciliation is a lifelong journey. It is a way of life more than an event. My name is Margaret Belton. My name is Alan Belton. And we have been married for 49 years this May.